cube in that top lane. He didn't have the best of time, honestly. He actually got a heavy amount of focus coming through from Moray, and it made it a bit of a disaster for Nuggery. But certainly if this matchup is left to the 1v1, Nuggery does have the advantage. With RNG though, having a little bit of an easier time when it comes towards the bottom side of the map, with the push power that they have in mid, I think it's easier for Wei this time to facilitate Xiaohu a bit more. And then eventually after, you know, you've got a bit of help already for that Nar, move down towards these dragons and start to play off the push power you've got with Tristana in that bottom side of the map. We'll have to wait and see. RNG going back over to that blue side against FBX, who honestly kind of just ran away with game one. Of RNG, you do not want to go to a 0-2. You want to be on 1-1, force it to a best of three, and see how well you can do into that one. Once you're even Stevens, anything's on the table. But for FBX, you're feeling the momentum. You're feeling that drive. You're feeling the, the gears shift into your favor, and you want to try and keep those engines, pistons pumping. Yeah, it is a little bit more difficult for FPX, I will say this time around, because you've got the Lilia there, she takes a little bit longer to actually have that big impact in the lane. Same when you're looking towards Doombie on this mid, he's not gonna have as great of invade power or at least priority there. So certainly I think FPX will actually look to try and play off of that one to two items, even that level six spike, rather than having that big early game invade style that we saw in the last game. Well, both teams now jumping on to the Rift for game two of this best of five. RNG looking to try and strike back after FBX took the advantage. We'll let the Gios go. PP God? LGD. Oh, I thought it was PP yeah. God for a second. I was like, oh my God. <laughs> LGD is the TSM of China, where a, every time they would just call it out randomly, like we used to with TSM. Used to? Yeah. I think we still do. It's like, it's just like it doesn't Sorry, matter. Sorry, as someone who has respect for himself, <laughs> yeah. I don't. But I mean, maybe you still do. I'm not going to say anything, you know? Hey, hey, hey. <laughs> you, can't, you can't help with who you love, all right? You can't choose who you love. You just, you just love them, and that's just the way it is. But... <laughs> Love is love, all right? And we're going to move on from there, <laughs> as you can see. Both teams just fanning out pretty stabog standard. You get a nice little bit of an aggressive ward here from the side of RNG onto the Raptors. They are going to be able to kind of be, be reassured as to where TN is pretty much once they hit that two-minute mark. And they're going to be able to kind of keep themselves safe regardless. Yeah, I'm curious to see now what happens on this top side, because at least from the early stages, like level one to three, Xiaohu does have push, so the opportunity for Wade to move up there and get that early scuttle, maybe even look towards the uh, the early terror dive on towards Nuggery, but with Tien also passing up that way, it feels like FPX are ready for this. It does mean that Tien, though, may struggle to get some of these early scuttle traps for himself. See what they're able to kind of get go for those scuttle crabs. You will have early priority in the mid lane with crying on the Azir now. Is something that just kind of generally gets that push prio. And it's again something that we saw FBX ban in game one. They did miss banned in game two. So it does slip through the cracks. And I'm curious to see now what RNG can do with that extra little bit of priority in the early game. Yeah, I think it's just more so it keeps way safe. I think that's the big one for me here. When I was looking at Tien and how well he played through Doom being the last game. I think uh, having a bit of breathing room for Wei, it's gonna come as a nice little bonus. You can see though, Tien passing up towards this top side. He is going to be here in case anything happens, but I'm actually looking to show who, uh, looks like he's actually got the way pushing in towards him rather than actually going for uh, the push that I expected. So as Nuggery, you've got to overextend here to actually shove this wave in, and it may give the opportunity for Wei to, to make a gank towards this top side. Got to be careful though, level 3 Aurelia with the passive is a uh, bit of a nuisance to say the least. And if you do get caught out by the flawless duet of the stun, you will get a hell of a lot of damage pushed back on top of you. Of course her passive when she gets that one stacked up does a hell of a amount of work. And we get the phase rush, swaps it back for a comet. Just a bit of trading here in the mid lane. They're going to pop out their pots and get themselves back this way. Gonna find himself TM, but TN is pathing the scuttlebug towards the top as best yeah, he can. But Nuggery can just come down as well. Doombi, although he's trading hard, does have some help in mid, but both mid laners are out of mana. Yeah, the both mid laners are out of mana, and TN takes the definitely least favorable trade. Doombi is here, but again, not a lot of mana. Nuggery first to rotate. It looks like they're just gonna have to give this one up. TN not gonna care now. I'm gonna try and move up back towards this scuttle crab, but he will be contested. 
Be a bit of a close one here. You can see 300 HP, no team really wants to go for it, but they get the track repel and the crash down with the Ferromancy Ming. Ignited, flash, auto attack, LWX first blood. Gala jumps to safety, but FBX just capitalizing. And that's why I'm so surprised by this RNG early game. Like, if Xiaohu pushes in, you've got mid push, you've got top push, you get that scuttle, you then rotate towards bot, you've got the man advantage there, but instead, Xiaohu not getting that push in top lane. When you look towards Doombi as well, really smart play from him to go for that heavy trade to make sure he could get control of mid to help out in that scenario. And then Gal and Ming just not respecting the all-in potential from Chris and LWX. There was a bit of an oopsie. You did lose the flash from Ming, so no flash body slams for the next three or four minutes. Just wait to see now what the next kind of big one is. And you get the you know reset now for the Kai'Sa. You get yourself back into the lane. You're going to be in a much better position to be able to contest with those early drakes as well. Yeah, and of course, getting the Serrated Dirk already means she's got a lot of laning power here. And when you look towards level six with the potential for Tien to come in here, Crisp to look towards these engages as well, I wouldn't be surprised to see Tien trying to play a little bit through this bottom side and look towards these early dragons. It actually makes Wei have a bit of a difficult time to try and play through Galen. And again, we were kind of talking about in game one, but for Gala and Ming, is, uh, excuse me, not Gala, I mean Wei and Ming, it's kind of about them kind of roaming around the maps, dictating the pace, looking to make advantages for their laners. And if you keep Wei down, you know, the, this kind of hole of not being able to influence anything, he kind of loses a lot of his gusto. Yeah, and you can see Xiao who's definitely not having the best of times in this top lane as well. He does need some help, especially if Nuguri, like, actually pushing Xiao Hu off there. He can look to freeze here. Tien is even here to make sure that Nuguri can get this off without uh, Ming and Wei stopping him. And now this is a disaster for Xiao Hu because you try to push up, Tien comes in. You've already got this, uh, this uh, CC that Nuguri can provide as well. You've got to be so careful. Careful, he's going to be able to tilt himself off of this. He does get the bounce, just get the flash. There is the flawless duet down on top of him, and there is no escape. Tien with the second kill of the game, exactly how you said it would go down. And now Wei is on this bottom side, but he's already spotted by a ward. He can try and turn this in towards a dragon, but still needs to be pretty careful because Nuguri does have that TP where Shenhu just burnt his, so they could look for something. Yeah, they're going to jump straight in on LWX, who does not have his flash. They do get the knockup, but hey, a double belly bop, so LWX will fall. Nuguri does flash in with the Vanguard's head and get himself a return kill. Here is Kryon though, he has got the Shreemus Shuffle, knocks him into the wall as Nuguri's trying to turn this one around. He gets himself Blade surging ahead, but he will not be able to get any more kills. Great on-head play there from Crying. Yeah, I mean, look, Doombi just wasn't quite able to get into that bottom lane in time, so it is a bit of a messy, messy play from FPX. However, you are Breathing such a sigh of relief as RNG. Fat Crying has two kills now, and you're able to turn around that play, including keeping Gala alive. That is massive for RNG. And not only that, but you're giving free time to Xiaohu now. He's going to be able to freeze Ming. that wave near him. I'm going to have to stop myself as there is a shockwave available. Ming is here. Wei gets himself the chicken, gets brought back. Still pretty tanky and should be able to walk out on skate. Yeah, Chris not quite there in time. Crying now moving back from coming in from base as well. So FPX are doing a good job of playing through this jungle, but do need to be careful as Gala's coming across. LWX not quite in position here. Well, they're gonna try to go for it. Smite goes down, Tien picks up that one there, has a little bit of a level lead now as he's got himself about three camps ahead of this Udir. But again, early game is very much skirmish heavy with both sides trying to push and pull, trying to get their advantages going for them. Let's talk about the big winners though, because if you're crying, all right, two kills, wonderful. You will be accelerated. However, Doom be still fine to just wave clear in mid. It's not like it's disrupted that lane matchup massively. Whereas when you look towards top side, Nuggery now already working towards that Blade of the Rune King very quickly. The CS lead, the kill advantage. When he gets that Blade of the Rune King, it becomes so hard for Xiaohu to actually disengage because of the slows that item provides. So this is actually a bit of a win for FPX when we look towards the early lane phase. But when we look towards, you know, the 20 to 25 minute mark for team fights, that's when Kryon can turn these two kills into something bigger. Well, if it worked once, why not work twice? As uh, Tien gets himself caught though. Xiaohu says, fool me once, shame on you. Fool me twice, shame on me. As he uh, keeps himself safe. This wave is pushing into him, so we won't lose anything really off it. Tien still hovering around the top side, making sure it's as dark and difficult for the top laner of RNG as possible. Especially when you know Crisp is roaming up from bot side, right? They're completely dark as to where the FPX bot lane is. So RNG are going to play the safe way. Might move in here to see if you can spot out what's going on with uh, Xiaohu at least coming down to give him a hand with that. 
Yeah, and there's Trading Vision right now. You can see Wade just trying to make sure his top lane is still behind, though, a little bit on the old uh, CS and the, and the levels. So definitely not looking the strongest in this jungle. But when that's all happening, Tien just says, hey, I'm back. I never really left. Vanguard's Edge just get a nice stun, though, here. As we can see the lilting lullaby. Can he keep his top laner alive? Wade cannot. And he does lose his flash. So again, FPX, explosive early games and just getting advantage after advantage. And this is the thing, like, yes, you've got Tien playing towards it, but Nuggery has been doing this all split long. Like, he's, as we said, second highest in damage percent for a team when it comes towards the regular split. He'd 31% of the team's damage so far in playoffs. And that's not even withstanding the fact highest goal difference of 15 for a top laner, highest CSD 15 for a top laner. At 15 CS difference. Like, this guy is a monster, and FPX has gone, hang on, why don't we just utilize this? Why don't we just kill them? <laughs> <laughs> the big brain move, the five head move as such. It's just like, oh my god, Nuggery can be carried. He can be carried potential here for us. And it's working a wonder here now. They got themselves a 1500 gold lead. They have the Rift Herald in the back pocket. Dragon's still on the board, so not even stacking against them as of yet. And I gotta say, Wei, yes, he's got three assists, but he's kind of been a little bit kind of run ragged at the moment. He's kind of trying to stop all the fires at once and not really doing anything in the grand scheme of things. And this is the thing, like, Wei has been very good at playing towards Shao. But when you've got, as you said, multiple fires in multiple different places, it becomes very hard for you to try and set yourself up correctly as RNG. Now, it looks like we're starting to get into a position where they do have a little bit more control on this mid to bot side of the map. They just need to make sure that Wei can, after this dragon goes down, return top, make sure that that fire is quelled and that Nuggery isn't just taking over. Because with the combo FPX have, Nuggery will have a field day dashing between these fights after a lullaby comes through, after a shockwave comes down. And that's not even talking about Crisp with this rail. Because Tien's going top. Do -do. He wants the, the world, world to know. know. <laughs> Got to drop Rift Herald. Yeah, honestly, this right now, Tien, not even going to drop the Rift Herald just yet. Nice little... Uh, uh, Excuse me, clearing <laughs> off the wave. I just my brain just turned off. It was there like for karaoke. A yeah. We're still in karaoke. <laughs> <laughs> Honestly, my brain was just like, we got it. We got all the lyrics going for us there. But they will eventually be able to get that one down. They will obviously get the turret as well. It's because right now you can't go anywhere near this top side. But I look at the mini map. I like this little move here from Wei and Ming. They're trying to make sure that Crying gets as much returned here in this mid lane. It's not going to be enough though. Like Nuggery is so damn large right now. And but the thing is, he can continue to uh, look towards like terror dives onto the mini nar, especially when he starts to move up towards like the stride breaker. Um, like this is going to be really, really hard for um, Shaohu to deal with. So, although you are getting like the Azir fed, it's a long time before that cash kind of comes in. Like you need to wait an entire year essentially for those dividends to come in, versus maybe like crypto where you can sell it like tomorrow, <laughs> so, <laughs> which is basically yeah, what we're getting from. It's the, it's the day trading kind of like I need to make money today versus yeah. the you know what I'm a, a long term I have it in my back pocket. Yeah. But Chris, a little bit of trouble. Explosive cast is nice. Flash away by Chris. Oh, Does not beautiful. get anywhere to go, though. And he was just, he was bounced around the house there. Cryon picks up that kill. And that's a nice little pick up there. Nice little bit of extra gold. Like you said, the investment, the nest egg. Yeah, and I mean, look, they're definitely stocking up nicely. Three kills now. This is going to be a pretty big Xeer. And I think that's the, the part that we have to look at for RNG is if Cryon can get big enough, he's got these Emperor's Divides. He can do work in these team fights as long as he's protected. And when you've got a Garrett Kragus there, when you've got Wei who can play defensive, and hell, even Xiaohu as well, who can just defensively ult with this Meganar, that does bode pretty well for RNG. Well, for FDX, they're not going to let them get to that point. They are not going to allow them the, the satisfaction oh, of knowing Wei. that Wei gets Shockwave in, Lilting Lullaby, but there's no follow-up. You've no wave. It kind of feels like a little bit of a missed trigger there from TN, maybe a little bit too late as the rest of his team was backing up. But you get yourself a couple of plates into that mid lane. You get yourself more pressure. And while that was uh, happening, you can see on the bot side, LWX is just free to push. But I love this from FPX, right? The reason Shao, who has been so able to contend with... Oh. Actually, hold on. Here we go. Teleport's coming in. LWX and a little bit of trouble he flashes away they get two teleports out of everybody it's going to be all five members of everyone here in this bot side crying still has not got the emperor's divide shao who forced to flash so it's flash for flash do you go in now lwx he has the mark but he doesn't have the cojones and now tn 
Needs to be a little bit careful, but with the protection of the rest of his team should be fine. And that's all the globals down. But uh, this is what I was about to say. I love this from FPX. Because the reason Shao who's been able to contend with top laners is because Wei has been facilitating. Crying. Bing has as well as... Oh, buddy. Oh, he flashes away. He still gets the shuffle. The shifting sands just coming out there. Very nicely done. But Doombi, he's getting more gold. He's getting more money. He's getting themselves lined and ready for this yeah. next team But fight. it's more fires in that bottom lane, right? And this is what RNG are trying to deal with. And because Tien has been doing such a good job of invading with Doombi, with Crisp, forcing RNG to deal with issues on the bottom side of the map, it's allowed the 1v1 between Xiao Hu and Nuggery to happen. And now Xiao Hu, he's been called out. He's like, look, Nuggery is a goddamn world champion. This guy knows how to beat you back every step of the way in the top lane. And Xiao Hu's feeling that full wrath now because he's not able to get these counter picks because Nuggery is constantly on red side and taking picks like this Aurelia to punish Xiao Hu in the laning phase. I mean, it's the ultimate test when you think about it. Like, you know, this is the current League of Legends world champion in top lane. He is the gold standard for what you aspire to be in League of Legends for top laners. And if you can't go up against him, then you're probably just not going, oh, Tien. Tien caught between a rock and a hard place or a bird and a bear. Trying to get himself out, flashes away. Just about gets the lilting lullaby out, but there's the Vanguard's edge. Nice flash. Oh, no, great duel. Oh my god, the flawless duet was just that. Nuggery is online, unlocked, and in charge. He's absolutely unleashed this game. F oh, do me, hang on up. Oh, no shockwave here, but he does have a flash and the explosive cast not going to be enough. So you're burning a lot of summoners here Nuggery's on the side of though. FBX, but Nuggery is there, but has no flash, has no Vanguard's Edge. Not really a position you want to be going for. Still, though, this is so nicely played by FPX. Like, Tien, don't get me wrong, definitely not the place he wants it to be. Did get... Oh! Oh, nicely done. And now Crisp is caught out. Gets shuffled back. Might be able to get the Magnet Storm down, though, as they try and take him out. Ignite ticking over. Crying will fall down. And now Ming needs to get himself out of dodge. He's trying to run away. Will have the Body Slam to go back. But Gal is here. Flash Body Slam into the Bear Slap. Into the jump over as Anuguri will be taken down. It is going to be Wei who gets that. Another one-two quick punch as the Dragon has spawned. But it will, will be going over to FBX. But here, look. FBX, they get Dragon. They get Bot Tower. And yes, it is some kills and some much-needed bounty gold into the hands of RNG, but honestly, you're still winning as FPX across the map. Now, RNG are like, right, we have to make something for this. They're going to go for the Rift Herald. They're going to go for the Rift Herald. Oh, look at that gold. gold. The gold between Xiaohu and Nuggery is in. It's literally the gold difference. Like, minus 1,000, which I think is between Wei and Tien. So it's it's just insane. Yeah, we thought the dragon was actually on the, the bottom side of the map. It's Nuggery who's just hoarding it. The dragon's yeah. gold <laughs> all around him. And uh, he's looking pretty penny like right now because... He's got so much there. We're already working towards that stride breaker. We talked about the potency of this Blade of the Rune King into the Nar and Aurelia matchup, and you just have this powerhouse that FPX can leave in a side lane, and for RNG, they need to find some way to deal with it. But with Xiaohu again on this Nar, not having the impact they want, the rest of the map starts to fall apart because FPX are free to do what they want with this. If FBX can keep up this kind of pace, RNG will be, dr be drowning. They don't yeah. no idea. They have no idea how to kind of deal with this one. But this is just got a, a very scrappy fight. It looks like Tien gets caught, but the lilting lullaby, the sleep duration, just keeps it long enough for Nuggery to get in position. Yeah, the movement speed that gets offered by the passive as well, really important there. That, oh. from, that from Nuggery was just beautiful. Completely blind in that scenario as well. This is, this is just beautiful. And... I want to see this. Like, this is where we get to see why that veterancy for these players makes such a difference. Because when you look towards the likes of Crying, when you look towards the likes of Gala, these guys have never really hit a world stage. But you have a 2019 world champions across of all four lanes. When you look towards that top lane, you've got Nuggery, this world champion as well. And that's why he's forcing RNG to go for these 1v3s because of the amount of attention he draws. He thrives on this pressure and FPX look amazing as a result. Three and a half thousand gold lead or just a little bit above it as we start to see pretty much all first items being picked up. And oh, this has all been happening as well. You can see LWX now got the Collector, got himself the Kraken Slayer. So he is feeling very happy right now. And honestly, Penguin, I'm starting to feel a little bit worried about our predictions. And a little. It's when I, <laughs> when I look it back. It was RNG across the board. That is fair. <laughs> but when I look back at history for these two teams, like these two teams have only met once in a playoff scenario. 
And that was summer finals where FPX beat RNG 3-1. And then they went on to win the world championship. And now FPX, they really do look like they have RNG's number in this series. And I'm not trying to make false equivalencies, but if FPX win this series, they win worlds. They win worlds. It's yeah. just how it is in Shenzhen. But long way to go in this series before that. You got to be careful here if you're Ming. He will get the Blade Storm on top of him. Excuse me, the Magnet Storm. Doom B does not get his Shockwave off, but the Flawless Duet right down on top of Xiaohu, who jumps out. Tien has to go golden. You can see, oh, Gala gets caught out right in the middle of everything. LWX is now going to be joining this fight. It's a two for one in favor of FBX and RNG. They're heading for the hills. They have to. They're already being chased down by FBX. They smell blood in the water, and already they can push in mid, they or they can out. look no for these. Oh, think they get out. They will get out. I actually think this is a mistake from FBX. I think you just let them. You go towards mid tower. You could have snowballed this a little bit more. They should still get it, but at least they get that little bit of a faster reset in. But Tien still being a nuisance in this RNG jungle. It's been happening all series long. He's been taking everything away from Wei at three level lead for the Lilia right now. It is absolutely monstrous what's the difference between Tien and Wei right now. As you mentioned, three levels, a hell of a lot of gold, and I really want to see just how those, because Gala looks like he's got a fantastic position, but just as he tries Crisp. to jump out and flash, Crisp catches him out with the Rel, and it just sets up absolutely everything. Now, looking at the Aurelia, 5-2-2, two, and two, you've got the Stride Breaker, so you've got, again, another gap closer to try and jump onto these people, but let's have a look at this, because this does look a little bit like everyone's kind of collapsing onto FBX, and do he gets blow blown up before it even starts. Yeah, you can see Ming does a pretty good job there of actually dissuading the engage and buying time. So he's able to get that cask off, reset the fight for RNG. But that double sleep means that Gala's on his own. Oh. And Crisp there, absolutely beautiful. The flash forward when he's in the melee start, but off the horsey, means he can flip him over the uh, back of himself oh, he's and just find dead. that kill. And then <laughs> he's yeah. just dead. <laughs> There's nothing yeah. he can do. Crying gets 1v1 there by LWX. It will happen. And that's the most fed member of RNG. That's the Azir with the four kills. That's the Azir that RNG are banking on. And he's just been completely wiped off by LWX. So now FPX very firmly in control. 5,000 gold lead for them. And RNG, this is this is a miracle. If they get this, this is all desperation. They're trying to force the fight here. Doombi did TP back into the mid lane. I'm sorry, Nuguri did. Doombi it's going was already fast. there. It's going down very, very fast. Oh, so you missed. can see the Magnet Storm as Chris goes a little bit far forward. He will have Xiaohu going mega very, very soon. But if that's all he has to expend, then he should be fine with it. RNG looking to try and see if they can get anything else off it. Gala pushes himself forward towards a potential fight. But you give yourself a little bit of time, you give yourself a little bit of ultimates, but you're not going to be able to contest this dragon. Yeah, Crisp missing that Magnus Storm, oh, but there we go! They find themselves a little bit of a pick on Crisp, and Crisp will go down. Now RNG then goes straight back towards this Baron. It looks like LWX is going to take this dragon, then move across, but that could be the pick for RNG that gets them back in this game. They melt this Baron so damn fast. You have so many ways of making this one. Swirl Seed it's lands. Gone. Here we go. The Baron is going down. 2,000 HP. Now you've got Tien in the pit. He's going to try and go for Explosive cast is genuinely perfect. There's now Nugri trying to see if he can catch anyone. Stride Breaker's followed. Flawless Duet is not flawless here. Flash from Way as he gets himself out. That should be the rest of RNG trying to see if they can go away from this, but... They flash forward, Vanguard's head misses, LWX jumps in with the Killer Instinct. Can they get anyone else out though? There's going to be enough to drag back Ming, but the TP is now in favor of side of RNG. He puts in Xiaohu, who will have Mega very, very soon. There he is. He's not gone. quite able to transform. You lose two. FBX, make sure you are punished. RNG get the Baron, but at what cost? As Xiaohu was so close to turning to Mega, maybe he gets the sun, maybe he turns around. And now FBX. They're looking to turn this back in favor of themselves. You've got 25 seconds until Xiaohu spawns, but FPX would be happy just taking this top lane turret. They get a couple of kills. They get a couple of those Baron buffs killed off as well. And just look at this, still yet to lose a tier one turret. You can see there, 6,000 gold or 5,500 gold in favor of FBX. They've got themselves two dragons. Luckily for RNG, they did take the first one. So that dragon stack, not quite there yet. But let's have a look at this escape, because right now, this is just FBX knowing they're stronger. But RNG, they were out. They got the cookie in hand. They were no longer in the jar. And Xiaohu has to TP in here to try and save it. But I think you let it go. You would have been able to walk away. And with Xiaohu coming in now, that's two members that are down. And he didn't even have his ultimate for this. This was just Xiaohu going way too deep. And I think, honestly, he maybe he missed timing. He second. looked like it. Yeah. Crying. Oh, crying. Oh, a little the bit damage, of trouble, though. but the damage back onto LWX. 1v2. Still not great for the side of RNG, as they're the ones with the Baron buff, but you'll take that trade. And they finally cracked themselves a tier one. 
Yeah, this is much needed for RNG. At least that Baron is giving them some nest egg gold, but they're actually trying to find where Tien is. Here. Oh, he's got him. He knows where he is, and he's going to jump straight in on top of him. There is a lilting lullaby, but I think Tien knows he's dead. Two rights, two way, and he will take him out. Two quick kills here for RNG, and like you said, that little bit of gold is now 4,000. Yeah, and those picks keep on rolling. Another tower for RNG. Like, there is a lot of standing gold on this map for RNG right now. And the fact that FPX keep getting caught with their pants down is a bit worrying. They need to be playing as a cohesive unit, getting their waves in order, using the fact that Nuggery is massive alongside LWX to find those opportunities to make the picks happen, to make these side lanes go in their favor. However, two and a half minutes until this dragon. A potential third dragon coming in for FPX. If they can find good flanks, coming in for Nuggery, coming in for Tien, it does become difficult for RNG to just take these fights. Take a breather, everyone. <laughs> take a chill. Yeah. Take a chill pill, take a breath. A drink of water. How are we supposed to check we're, Twitter? <laughs> we're basically a kill a minute. Like, yeah. And I mean, look, it's an FPX game, right? These guys average a kill a minute. You're at 11 this. kills at six but minutes still, in the last game. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> but this, this is how these two teams have been playing. We looked at the regular season game, it was team fights, and we mentioned it before we went into game one that it was all about how these team fights are executed. And speaking of executed, Gala <laughs> is dead. Now LWX is going to see if he can get anything else, but immediately you're already at a disadvantage now. LWX and Kai man. How does he do it? How does he always manage this? There's highlight reels of him beating back WE on this pick. Now we're getting it in round four of the playoffs. Them finding these picks on towards RNG and it's off of that powerhouse AD carry LWX. Nuggery, you'll see if he can get a cheeky little move there on the Shaohu, but the Nar should not be killed. Wei is nowhere near this. He will have the Azir though. Baron is not on the field, neither is the Dragon, so you can see they're just trying to get as much gold as they can, take away all these camps here from, it, or from RNG by FBX, and see if you can just get everything to be in your advantage. And honestly, this is a masterclass from TN, because I've been looking at Dwayne and like, he actually may be my favorite jungler. Well, he's definitely my favorite jungler, but might be one of the best junglers we have. He's definitely top two in the LPL. Tien has come back off his hiatus and gone, hang on a second, lads. This meta is shifting in towards Gankin. This meta is shifting in towards my style of play. And he's gone, yeah, that's cool. But I also have this different style where I'm able to get these invades off. I'm able to play my game and shut down everything RNG are trying to do. Full item for Nuguri as well, ahead of his counterpart. You can see the makings of a half item there for Tien over Wei. Wei's in a fine spot right now. He's got his two kind of tanky items. He'll be a very fast boy running around this map. But now, RNG, 13 seconds of those dragon spawns. Xiaohu's not here, though. He is walking across now, but they still need to make sure that he can actually join in with RNG here. Now, at least, having this, yeah, at least having this control over the river is good for RNG because they can spot these flanks, but they still need to be careful as Xiaohu trying to see if he can come in and catch FPX unaware. Very important to recognize, no flash for LWX does have the cleanse. Flash for Gala, but everything else is pretty much up, 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 up on the board. Flash for Nuggery will be available. It's going to be the soul now set Sh up for FBX. Xiaohu's looking. Xiaohu is looking. I think FBX want to try and just keep themselves at arm's length, and they will just take the dragon. They've got to push in the mid lane. They've got the That's inside the big track. One. Uh, RNG, they've got to exit stage right, and FPX are like, cool, we'll run it down this mid lane. They should be able to crack the base, as the uh, recalls are only just coming in for RNG. Yeah, you'll be able to take this inhibitor, no problem whatsoever, and this is why, if you're ever wondering, ladies and gentlemen, oh, I'm going to stop myself there, as Nuggery jumps in, flawless duet, they do get the explosive cast down, but nobody gets caught in it. Look at Gala. Gala's only just resetting, like, you can't even fight this now as Nuggery gets on towards Shouhu. Yeah, he's taking no damage as well. Now he takes a little bit of damage, we do see finally some semblance of a carry coming in here from RNG's side, but that is a perfect example as to why you need mid prio before you go for dragon. If you don't get the dragon and you end up losing that, oh, LWX, just go forward, but Enzo kind of keeping himself a safe distance away. But now with this Baron kind of on the cards, do they just kind of burn this one down? Honestly, it's, on the, it's something they can do. You do have to be careful though. Again, Xiaohu, if he gets that big ultimate off, crying, Gala, like there's so much damage that can come off in these pits. You need to make sure that you're separated as FPX. Nuggery has a lot of free reign in these fights, but 
RNG now starting to push in. They can hop over the wall in a lot of scenarios to just start this fight. Oh, TP they're going top for Tien. They're going in straight in on top of Tien, who is going to have to try and get himself out of this. Doombi trying to delay everyone. The Swirl Seed is there. The TP in, but the Flash Shuffle. Tien is still in his stasis, but will fall to cry. And now, you're 5v4 on the map. Baron is there. You have no jungler, FBX. Xiaohu, though, is on top side. So FBX are so careful to come through these tight corridors. This is a field day for Xiaohu if he can find us. Here we go, starting up the Baron here for RNG. This is how you get yourself Shao back Hu's into the mini. game. Xiaohu will go mini very, very soon. Wei is taking a bit of punishment. They jump straight onto Nuguri, who gets the flawless duet and jumps forward. The Vanguard's ledge lands onto everybody. He gets a stark pop as Elder Wex jumps in. Gala is dead, as is the Azir and the Udir, and the rest of RNG will fall. Triple kill here for LWX on this Kaiser. He doesn't need any of his summoners, and the rest of FBX gonna run down this mid lane and put themselves at match point for this series. It's a whitewash for FPX. That's the combo we were talking about when you look towards Doombie, Chris, Nuggery, Vanguard's Edge into Shockwave, into Disaster for RNG and FPX. They will close out game two. They will indeed. They've got everything going for them. They were able to punish this NAR blind. It's a delayed quadra for LWX. The Nexus turrets fall. The Nexus sure to follow. And FBX set themselves up two to nothing in this series over RNG. They will pad the stats a little bit, but there's nothing you can do to stop Destiny. I mean, the Phoenix is, Phoenix is rising. This has been incredible from FPX. The ability for them to have full control of this early game, find the powerhouse movements to just get them into these team fight victories and just outplay RNG and